Today, we'll explore how do we make this UI to go from good to great in under one hour. Before we begin, let's throw in a disclaimer. With that out of the way, let's begin. Looking at this design, it looks very clean, sleek, and modern. Wanda did a very great job at this, but what we are here today is to explore how do we take this to the next level and learn from it together. A redesign is not about changing your UI completely to the point where users don't remember your brand anymore. To me, a redesign is keeping what works, retaining the brand identity. This is an e-commerce platform. We are designing the checkout experience where the users are choosing the payment method. Before we design anything at all, let's start outlining what should a user do on the payment method screen. Step one is to choose your payment method your shipping address, to your order. So you won't pay until you finish reviewing your order. Now let's look at this screen and critique how we can improve it further. Now, first of all, I think that this payment method text doesn't provide enough context to the user. It doesn't tell the user what actions should they make. And I think there should be at least a back button here. This progress indicator is really good, especially in checkout because it outlines where the user is at this point in time. But we could do better to indicate that this is the current step. We can also introduce some text in these places. I like what Wanda has done with the UI. It's very modern, it's very clean. Notice that she used a blue shadow at the bottom here. So this is a really great tip. Use the shadow color that is complementing the object that is being elevated. In this case, this is a blue card and hence Wanda added some blue shadows at the bottom. So these texts are not very readable, especially when you're having a white text on a blue background. We will need to increase the contrast between the text and the background so it will be easier to read. The hierarchy is really great and we will also keep this layout. And this little line is super beautiful. For me, I generally prefer my buttons to have a minimum of 44 pixels height. These three icons feel a little bit inconsistent, so we will try and see how we can improve this UI. The radio button is a little bit too small and the deselected state is not obvious. Let's move on to the add cart page. There's one thing missing here, which is save cart for future purchases. The expiration date could be cut off here and the CVV as well. So CVV is not month and year, it should be three digits. So this button, instead of calling it add, call it add cart. It's good to also be specific on what type of card that you want to add. So perhaps we can use a lighter color so that the user knows that, hey, this text field hasn't been filled up yet. And I think this one could be a cross as well. I'm really nervous because it's been a while since I've done something like that. But I'm not perfect and I'm learning as well. So let's see what good comes out of this episode. All right, I have my coffee here and I'm ready to redesign this. Even though I've been designing for years, I still go back to reference real-world products to study their design patterns and improve upon my own design skills. First, I'm going to give this a light pale blue background. I find that having a light pale background is easier on the eyes and it gives better contrast. And then I'm going to add the bottom bar and the status bar. I'll start by outlining the elements on the screen. I'll reuse the brand color redesign the stepper, add subtitles to each step, and since the text is too long, we'll shorten it this way. To indicate clearly to the user which step they are on, we're going to make the second and third step on a lower opacity, and making the payment text semi-bold. Now we have a problem. 20 minutes have passed and I haven't started redesigning this thing. We really gotta speed up a little bit. So after adding an icon to the payment step, I can move forward and start designing the card section. I'll create a component for this card. I looked up the aspect ratio of the standard credit card and I decided to follow that. So I played around with the gradient background at the back. I felt that removing that rounded border and making it appear fade out would look more attractive and takes away the tension so that the users can focus on the cards. Users can add a new card at the end of the carousel so that it flows better as compared to a button at the bottom of the screen started adding the OR divider. I used the pale blue to align with the brand color, even on the text. Now, we tweak the spacing and start creating the other list items in the bottom. Again, create the first item as the component so that when I change one thing, everything changes. I went back to the blue background and started exploring how can I make this better looking. I added radial gradients to achieve this look. 
I added a radio button here and made the size larger than before. Adding the text label to each item. You can also add secondary text below the payment method so that in future, users can get more context. I'm experimenting with different methods of showing the payment logo and see which one works better. If I were to show the logo like this, it would be very messy and hard to scan. And I tweaked each logo's sizes so that they look visually consistent. I aligned all of those logos to the right as well. I tweaked the spacing and started designing the selected radio button states. During checkout, it's important to assure your customers that you won't be charged yet so that they would happily continue to the next step. I've added a tiny text and experimented with different layouts to see which one works better. Then I moved on to the card designs. The card designs took a little bit longer. I've also went on Dribbble to get inspiration. Honestly, card design is tough. I took a break and experimented with different card designs. Cards with different banks have different color schemes. On the Add Card page, I included the toggles to enable this as the default card or save for next time. I've added the Scan My Card button. Users don't have to manually input the card details every time. I've also added a helper icon for the CVV field in case the users don't know where to find their security code number. The checkout experience should be fast, intuitive for the user to pay quickly and get out of the way. And this is the result. If you enjoyed this redesign series, let me know in the comments below if you want me to continue making this sort of stuff. Although this redesign isn't perfect, I still hope that this has been useful to you. With enough practice and dedication, I believe that you can do better than what I've already done here. If you're learning UI UX design and you don't know where to start, watch this video. I'll see you there and goodbye. <laughs>